Hola, I'm Jen, the biz strategista. I'm an ocean strategist and architect. I build digital workspaces for small business owners and creators who are ready to clear their mind space and boost their business. All right, so if you actually found me on threads, then you probably saw me create this super easy way for me to bring up any ideas I have and send them over to Notion. So if I were to just uh, click on the play button and then write down my new idea, it gets sent over to Notion. And so I've been reading up on the Notion API docs, playing around with more shortcuts, as you can tell. And I basically set up a new one that I'm going to teach you guys how to build out today. So it's a, it's a to-do, it asks for a priority, and now this one includes a due date. So if I click on play to run it, I also added it down below into my doc. So if I were to just click on this, it'll open it up too. So what's the priority? So like and subscribe to my YouTube. Let's give it a high priority and then here I get to change the date for when something like this would be due. So we click done and it has that check so that means it went well and it sent over to Notion and already populated. So May 20th at 11 uh, with my task and the priority and then it says that it was created by Apple Shortcuts. So today you're going to learn how to build something like this as well. So let's get started. All right so to get started, I actually built out this Apple Shortcuts Times Notion page um, that I'll share down below in the description to help you start and basically have the snippet codes. So I created one for one property, two, and then three. Obviously, once you start like playing around with it, you can figure out how to add in more properties. I also have the Notion endpoint, so we don't have to worry about this. It's just your URL, so we can get Apple Shortcuts to send it to Notion. And then I also included other things like where you can find the integrations, more API docs, and the property values, and all this other stuff. So I actually included an example database, and I'm actually going to use that same database for myself. And it has three columns. I have a task, a priority, and a due date. And so when you're creating your own Apple shortcut, doesn't matter which database you use, if you want to choose this example or not, or if you want to create like one that you already have a task, just make sure that you're within the full database page. And so how do you figure that out, right? You click on the three dots up here. And if this option comes in to lock the database, then that means that you're within the full page, uh, full database page view. So you want to make sure that you're on this. I would say if you're not sure, if you're looking at this example resource that I have, this is not a full page database. This is an inline one. So you want to click on the uh, title to view the full page and then it opens it up again. So make sure that you get this option to lock it, but we're not locking it. We just want to copy this link just to have it. And then we're going to make this note to copy down that database uh, URL. And basically what we need from here is just, we need to know what the database ID is so we can send this information from Apple to Notion. So everything past this question mark, it's not needed. Everything uh, in front of this forward slash, not needed. So this is, this is what really we need, this database ID. And this is what you need. So actually notice that I pulled this database ID from the example that I have down here. That's not the database that I want to use. So I'm going to go back to the one that it is part of this tutorial. Which I'm going to name it YouTube tutorial. And then I'm going to copy this link instead to then paste this new link and same thing. Delete everything in front of the slash. Delete and then anything past this question mark. So this is the database ID that I want. And then I'll delete the example one that I have. So awesome. We're good now. Now let's set up the integration, which is basically just allowing access for Apple to view this database and to send it information. So if you go to your task database, you can access this through a couple of different ways. So you can first go to connections and hit connect to. Here are some connections that um, Notion already has like Zapier and all this, but we actually want to manage connections, so we're going to create a new one. So you can access it access through clicking on those three dots or by going through your settings, which obviously this opens up into anyways. So if you wanted to go through there, same thing. Uh, 
we can access connections from different places. So, all right, so it's not that crazy. We're just gonna click on develop or manage integration so we can bring the Apple shortcut and it can basically view and add information into our Notion database. So we're gonna uh, click on this plus sign that says create new integration. You're going to give it a name. So I'm gonna just name this my YouTube tutorial. You can upload an image if you wanted to. It's just preference and aesthetics. Submit and that's it. We build the integration. And the key thing here is to get this secret key. So I'm going to show it and then I'm going to copy it. And then I'm just going to add it to my notes because we're going to need this later uh, because this is my Notion API key now. All right. Awesome. So now we have that. So the last thing we need to do with this database, uh, this database for me is that I want to now add in a connection uh, to the database. So we're going to connect to, we're going to look down. It's not in here yet. So I'm going to do a command refresh to refresh this page and hopefully bring in that integration. All right, so same thing, three dots, connect to, and then we go all the way down and there it is, YouTube tutorial. So now Notion is asking, is it okay that this uh, integration is gonna have access to the database and all the child features within it? And we wanna say yes, confirm. And now it's in there. Now there's a little green dot that shows that it's connected and we're basically done on the Notion side. So let's start and so let's go over to the Apple shortcut side. Okay, so now we have Apple shortcuts open and to create a new shortcut, we're gonna click on this plus sign up here and there is nothing in here. So we're gonna have to create um, the questions that we wanted, we wanted to ask us for us to input then and then also like send that code to Notion. So it's not that crazy. The first thing that we're gonna do is get input or ask, it's actually ask for input. Ask for input. We're gonna put this first one in here and it's gonna ask for a text. So the title or whatever tasks that you want at hand, it's gonna ask what's the priority. And then you wanna make sure that this allow multiple lines box is unchecked because Notion can't, re or Apple shortcuts can't send multiple pages to Notion within that same shortcut because it's asking you one uh, page at a time. So if you wanted to add in more, you would just press the button. All right, so that's the first one. Next, with the selection that I had, I'm gonna bring in a list. Here's my list. I don't want one or two. I want the same um, high or low priority. So I'm just gonna use the emojis. Bring that one in and then the cold. And like that. And then now we need to ask us another question, which is choose from a list. So it's going to pull from this list up here and it has this small little line. So that shows that there's a connection. We're going to show more and then what's our prompt. So our, what, what's the priority level? And because this specific property is a select property, um, I'm not going to let it select multiple ones. And I guess that's another like key thing to remember is that every type of property that you have in, within here, you want to make sure that it's the same as the way that you input it on the Apple shortcut side. So this is just a select property. Um, and so I'm just going to let it select one on the Apple side. Uh, so let's go back over there. All right, so we have two questions. And now the last question, which is ask for another input, but inst instead of asking it, getting it to ask us for text this time, we're going to get it to ask us for a date and time. So what is the prompt? Uh, when is this due? All right, and then we're gonna ask it to show more and we can have a default date or time, but we don't really need to worry about that because we're going to always input something. Okay, so we have all three of our questions set up and next we need to go and add in this text. So it might 
actually give you like text action suggestions. Um, but if it doesn't, you can always just search for text and it'll come up. And so here is where that Notion resource that I built out will come super in handy because I actually inputted three different code snippets for you guys to pick from. So I'm gonna do this third one. We're gonna copy it. And then we're gonna go to Apple Shortcuts and input this. And so it's a very like uh, basic type of code. I think it's like a JavaScript code, but it's like simplified, which is called JSON. That's what it's called. So a couple of things to note here is that we have the parent um, database. So bringing in that database ID that we already got, we'll be, we will be inputting that in here. And then there's three other properties to note. So the task property that goes hand in hand with, uh, where is this? My Notion task database. Let's close that one. Let that go. Okay. And then we have our priority, same thing, priority, um, and then our due date. So I just say like when you're look when you're setting this up for yourself, this task name. And on Notion side, make sure that these are the same uh, spelling, uh, so it like mirrors over. Because if this is called like the default for this one is name, so if this is name, you want to make sure that this is changed to name over here too. If not, you can run into some errors. So let's keep that as task, and then I don't want to. Did I want to add a new one? So all of these are good, and. Now, all we have to do is just add in our info. So first things first is getting that database ID. I'm gonna copy this, and then I'm gonna paste it within the database ID. So we have that completed. Next is properties and the task. So this is asking, I want this one connected to the first question. So what's the priority? So we're going to select all of this with what's within the quotation marks and start typing provided input so to check i'm pretty sure this one yeah this one's coming from the date i don't want the date one so because uh i would say like apple shortcuts gets a little uh funky sometimes i'm actually going to instead uh do that provided input and start it with the one down here because it's already choosing from that date right so i'm actually going to call this do because it's, that's what it's called on my Notion side. And then I wanted to get the date. The format cannot be medium um, because Notion's API won't be able to read it. So it has to be this ISO 8601. Um, and then I actually asked it to ask me a date and a time. So we're going to include this time piece. And then this already went away. So let's name that and ask it to reveal. So where is it pulling from? So it's pulling from this question, which is nice. All right, we can go back. Everything should be, yeah, everything should be good. I have it set to do. So now let's go back up here and see if it'll pull from the one all the way at the top. So we're gonna ask it to do provided input again. I'm gonna ask it to reveal itself. And yeah, it's pulling from the one on top. So nice, that's what you wanted. You want text, all right, cool. So now it's bringing in from that text. So I'm just probably just going to edit this. Oh, to give it a variable name so I know where it's pulling from. I'm just gonna call this text. Okay, nice. And then the last one is getting it to pull from this question and not from the list, basically getting it getting it to get the answer that we had selected. So we're going to highlight chosen name again, and then we're going to start typing chosen item. And just to double check where it's coming from. Yep, it's coming from the one in the middle. All right, so we have set up the code. Everything is has the variable getting pulled in. So now we need to basically everything that we have in Apple shortcuts, send this over to Notion. And we already have the key in all this. Um, so it's just a matter of just putting in the correct uh, 
keys in. So next we're gonna get this URL and put it all the way down uh, at the bottom of the sequence. There it is. And then within Apple shortcuts, we have this endpoint. So this is where we're gonna get this information and send it to this URL, Notions API. So there it is, the URL and sending it. So let me get con get contents. Looking nice. We're gonna put this one all the way to the bottom. There we go. So again, it has that little line. It may or may not go away. Don't worry if it doesn't, because it's still pulling from this URL. So we're, instead of this method of being get, it's going to be post. And then make sure the next part um, that we do is make sure you click on this drop down that says headers. Don't worry about this side yet. Let's do, let's add in three. So these are already things that Notion has provided. Um, so the first thing being is the authorization code. So let's write this key authorization. And for Notion, the beginning to that secret key is bearer. So we're going to type bearer, a space, and then we're going to go to our notes and get our API key, which is this. And so make sure you have with your arrow, you have that one little space and then in command E. With arrows, you can see it again. You can like go up on it again. So a quick thing to note on here is that because we're um, pasting that key in, it might just go away, like you might not see it. So clicking your arrows and like tapping it to the right, you'll be able to see everything that's in here. So nice, that's working. Our next key then is the content type. So what is this? What are we sending over? And for everyone, it's going to be application of, I believe this is forward slash, and then uh, JSON. And then lastly, we have this last key, which is just what version are we on for Notion? Here is this. And then it's for everyone again, the same 2022, uh, 2022-06-28. So we already have all that set up. And then we're going to request this not as uh, the script, but instead we're going to ask it to get the file. So what file is that? It's just our text that we're pulling up here. And it may or may not go away. Don't worry if it goes away. It should still pull and we're going to run it to see if it works. So we're going to press play. What's the priority? Um, like and subscribe with a hot. And then by today, when I upload this later, say 5 p.m. And then we click on done. And then because this is the first time that you're sending something over to the Notion API, it's going to ask you, hey, do you allow this? Say allow. And then, all right. So I actually went back in and I inputted the correct database ID because I got an error code saying that I wasn't connected. So you gotta make sure that you're pulling in from the correct database with the correct URL link. Um, don't make that mistake that I did. So now that I'm gonna try to play this, it's going to run um, without that error code. So I have this a little bit wrong. So we press play. It's the priority, like and subscribe with a high uh, fire emoji. And then when it says do, so we're gonna say today at five, 45, that works, PM. Once we finish, it's then going to give you this full code that shows you that it ran. And we can also check here. And yes, it's here now. So it has a task, the priority, and a due date. So that's how you create an Apple shortcut that connects to your Notion. And to access any of these Apple shortcuts, you can access these across all your Apple devices because they sync. Uh, so if you had any questions or comments or just other things that you want us to know about Notion, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Awesome. Thanks so much. And I hope this helped. See you in the next one. Bye.